Hi everybody, Mike from the Digital Media Lab here today to show you how to make this composite image inside of Adobe Photoshop. We'll be looking at selection tools, some of the basic selection tools, as well as uh, some general concepts behind selecting and some other things like that. You can see here that we're also going to, later on in the lesson, we'll delve into how to make a vector mask and a little bit of text. All right, let's get started. We'll go ahead and go up to File Open and select the Valley of Mars. So this image labeled Mars. And we're going to create and drop out our moon. Now before we do that, I just want to kind of explain a few things about how selections work. With this, we're going to use one of our basic selection tools. And I'm just going to use my marquee selection tool and just draw a box. And we're going to take a look at how selections work inside of Photoshop. Now with the selection tool active, if I move, if I click and drag, I can move my selection around. All right, if I grab my move tool, however, you can see here that I move around the thing that I have selected. So you can move the actual pixels and things like that. I'll go ahead and press Control Z or Command Z to undo that. Also, anything, any action that I perform, so in this case, I'll take my brush tool and I'll use my bracket keys to make it bigger. Any, any action that I perform is only going to happen with inside of the marching ants. That's what these are called sometimes. They're called the marching ants. So within my selection. All right, I'll go ahead and undo that. I can also go do things like edit fill. If you guys, oh, edit fill, by the way, just incidentally, is very similar to the, uh, if you're kind of familiar with like the paint bucket and paint, edit fill is the paint bucket essentially. So if I fill this with any color, I can select foreground and some other options here. I'll go ahead and just select white. If I click okay, we can see here that my, the action that I performed only happened within the selection. I'll go ahead and undo that and then I'll press control D to deselect or remove my selection. Uh, most of the time, however, you're going to use your selections to create a mask. And let's kind of dig, dig into how to do that. Now, one of the things you have to realize is that Photoshop does not see the image as you see it, right? It only sees differences in contrast. I'm going to press Control plus here a few times and then hold down my space bar to kind of drag over here. We can see here that there's quite a bit of contrast down here, but as we get into our shadow areas, it's not, it, there, it's not really clear as to the border of that image. So if we use one of our um, selection tools that are very automatic, and there's a new one inside of Photoshop that I've been hankering to try out, it's under Select, and if we select Subject, it's going to use to the best of its ability, let's wait a few seconds here, it's going to use to the best of its ability to try and select things uh, based on what it sees. And of course, it sees differences in contrast. Now down here we can see that it's not really forming that very well. If I go ahead and convert this to a mask, incidentally, I only need to click the add a layer mask button down here at the bottom of the layers panel. By creating a mask like that, it automatically converts that selection into a mask. Now just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go to solid color and we're gonna add like this red. And then if I drag this back here, we can see very clearly that Photoshop did not quite grab that selection very well. So this kind of, I'm going to press Control Z a few times to undo that and Control T to deselect that. And we're going to try one of our um, more manual selection tools. So in this case, we obviously want an elliptical marquee tool, um, not the rectangular marquee tool. Uh, and while I have this tool active, I just kind of want to go over some of the options that we have here at the top for any, then this will be true of any selection tool. So by default, it creates a new selection. And then there is an option here immediately to the, to the left called add to selection. So if you guys remember from Pathfinder, this works very much like Pathfinder where each time I click and drag, I add to my selection. So if I can add to my selection, it reasons that I can subtract from my selection. So if I drag out like here, you can notice that it subtracts from selections. Now, if you really want to get advanced in this, there is the fourth option of intersect. And I find that this one confuses people. Uh, when you're new to this program, this one's kind of confusing. But an intersection basically will select the overlap. So wherever these two selections overlap, it will keep. And wherever they don't, it will remove. Uh, let me make a selection that makes a little bit more sense with that. So I'll click and drag an intersection here, and it's only going to keep the portions that were intersecting between the two selections. If you don't know, if that one's a little bit confusing for you, don't worry about it. Um, you'll get by with add and subtract 99% of the time. I'll go ahead and press Control D to deselect that. 
And let's go ahead and I'm going to make sure that my mode, I'm going to go ahead and just right click my tool here and select reset tool just to make sure that I'm back to defaults. Uh, some of these other options you're not going to need to worry about. Feathering we can do later on. Anti-aliasing, these defaults will be perfectly fine. The uses that you're going to be using it for. All right, so let's try to make a selection, finally, of Mars. We're going to be using this as our moon. But if we click and drag, we're going to notice that this tool does not behave like we really want it to, right? I can sit here and I can click and drag out a selection. I'm, I'm going to try multiple times. And no matter where I click, let's try from over here. It, it's really, really hard to get this right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control D to deselect that. And uh, if I click and drag, and I haven't let go of the mouse button yet, so the first trick I can do is I can hold down the spacebar button and I can reposition things on the fly and try to get this as close as I can. Now I still am going to have a little bit of trouble getting this precise, but it will get me pretty darn close. Okay, so get your selection as close as you can, and then I want you guys to right click the selection and we can, this by the way is a very very useful menu. We have a lot of really good options including fill, stroke, a lot of very very useful options inside of this menu. I'm going to select transform selection. If we do tr free transform it will actually transform the pixels. We want to just transform the selection itself. So I'll select transform selection and I'm going to use this to kind of adjust. Now as you're adjusting you may notice that uh, Photoshop by default wants to constrain the proportions of the selection. So you notice that as I drag this up, it also drags the rest of the selection around. That may not be what you want. What you're probably looking for is the, uh, the way it behaves when you hold down the shift key. So if I hold down my shift key, it will only, it will only adjust the side that I am adjusting rather than trying to keep everything proportional. Incidentally, Mars is not proportional. Planets tend to bow out in the middle as they spin around. So there you go. Once I'm satisfied with my selection, and, and just a, a word of note about this, when you're selecting, you're really looking for a selection that looks realistic. There is no need for you to create a selection that is immediately on the line that you're trying to select. So what you tend to want to do with most selections is select just barely on the inside of an object because that's still going to look realistic once I drop it out. If I try to knock this out, and I'm just going to very deliberately create a selection that has just a little bit over just to kind of illustrate the point. Let's make it a little bit less obvious. And I'll go ahead and press return to commit that change. If I go ahead and let's just look at that, we can see here that it creates this red, or excuse me, this black border around my image. If I, Once again, if I use my uh, create a temporary solid color adjustment layer, and it'll just make it red, to make it obvious, drag it to the bottom like I just did before. We can see here that it makes a really, really, like this is really, really, really obvious when it would probably be better if I just cut to the barely to the inside of that and I would still, it's still going to look realistic if you cut you know just a tiny bit to the inside. So let's undo that a few times. Let's get back to my selection. So control Z to undo. And I'm going to right click and go to transform selection one more time. And I'm just going to adjust this in just a tiny bit. Adjust this in just a tiny bit to make sure I select just on the border, just in the inside if you're you know do this to taste. Once I've got that, we can convert our selection into a mask by clicking this add a layer mask at the bottom of the layers panel. And voila, we have the first piece of our composite complete and selected nice and neatly. All right, in the next video, we'll take a look at uh, selecting some of the other objects that we need.